いですか So, I will read everything in English. You find it in the part one, page 24 of our handout. And chapter nine. To you who would like to slap your boss with a letter of resignation. As a human being, you can walk freely in any direction you choose. As a human being, whatever you do, you should do it in a way that can't be repeated a second time. What can re be repeated is best, best left to the robots. Life does not, doesn't run on the tracks. On tracks. Birds don't sing in major or minor. Bodhidharma's teaching doesn't fit on lined paper. The Buddha Dharma is wide and unlimited. When you try to hold it still, you have missed it. It isn't right, caught. But a live fish, living fish have no fixed form. In the soldier's handbook, it says that in war you must be prepared for a thousand different possibilities. That doesn't just go for war. There is no rule book for life either. And you try to live your life according to a manual, you are sure to fail. For a court case as well, it goes without saying that you have to be on your guard when everything runs according to the book. The white geese leave no traces, yet no matter where, where they fly, they never lose their way. There are no footprints on the way of the birds. It's not the same as a steam engine that runs on tracks or an ox well-worn path. Don't we live life from moment to moment? How could we possibly take life, analyze it, systemize it, systematize it, and file it away? The sad thing about people is that they can't stray even a single step away from their habits. Those who do things according to the book are failures. We constantly let ourselves Selves be distracted by details, and in this way we lose sight of the whole. We buy strange things that we don't want at all and hope that we just might win something with a lottery ticket the cashier gives us for free. Actually, studying means gaining insight into life. Since the Meiji period, however, it's turned into a matter of getting a qualification for professional life. However much you accomplished in this life, you can't present any of it at the last judgment. You will die naked. In the world, isn't what we call good or bad, true or false, more or less the same thing? When the Hojo clan stormed Kusunoki Masahige's Chihaya castle, Even on the Hojo side, some soldiers died. They called it a glorious death. That's why there are poems like the following. When you are ready, even for fame and glory, to throw away your life, how can you hesitate to sacrifice it for the Dharma? In the end, there will be nothing left for you to, to do besides let go. You've got to stand on solid feet no matter what direction the wind might blow. Isn't it evident that the greatest happiness, happiness consists in doing what you have to do? Not wasting your time in life means sitting stable in the right place at the right time, not missing the precise moment. Your life shouldn't be just one defeat after, after the other constantly on the run until your last hideout is found. I am a man of leisure who has made the whole universe his own. Daiji Senji. From Daiji Senji. That's quite another way to live. Now I've reached the point where I can finally leave the world behind me. This real realization is a cause that enables you to leave home and become a monk. It enables you to do zazen. You can't depend on anything, the value of things changes. 
This insight is what motivates Chakyamuni to renounce his king's title, to leave his wife and son and become a monk. Hi, so this was chapter 9. And um, so I choose some. I didn't go like yesterday, um, like um, uh, Johnson did to everyone. I just choose some. Uh, I, I felt much more connected, and I felt oh yeah, I, I could uh, do something with that, and something comes in my mind when I hear it. Um, so I choose. I choose uh, three, three of all these. And um, the first one I chose was uh, Sawaki said uh, you should do uh, you should do it in a way it can't be repeated. This is second second saying. As a human being, whatever you do, you should do it in a way that can't be repeated a second time. What can repeat it is best left to the robots. Um, so yeah, what basically comes uh, immediately in my mind here was um, can't be repeated. Uh, yeah, you have to be in the moment, put your effort, concentration into the moment, and uh, practice wholeheartedly. Um, also, Dogen Zendi he wrote a, a chapter called Bendora, and it's also translated as it can also be translated as a talk on the uh, wholehearted practice of the way. Um, when something you do is new, then uh, it's easy to to have concentration or you put effort, you're excited um, because you want to know the, the new thing you do. And when you come to Antaji, for example, uh, you are new and you want to learn a lot of things and it's very exciting and, and, and you are more aware of what you're doing and, uh, and, and it's easier. To do it wholeheartedly, I would think. I would, I would think. Um, but when something become a routine uh, and, and 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 you repeat it, then it could be that uh, you lose your 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 effort and your, your concentration. Uh, so when I read this, uh, I was in, in I was uh, late December, just before Takuhatsu. Mm. And this stayed in my mind, and uh, also when you do takuhatsu, the first time you do it, it's uh, it's very exciting, and it's every time very exciting when you do it the first time. Um, they have the people there. You go out there with your with your monk clothes, and I'm not used to going out and show myself. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, everybody is looking to you, and you, you know you have to I don't know don't don't make any mistakes also. And then you have to find a spot where you stand. Then you stand there, and yeah, you don't know what happened. And you are very like, so I'm I'm very like uh, excited, and I don't know what happened. And I hope nobody will, will slam slam me in the face, something like that. Or I don't know. It's very I don't know. I feel very uncomfortable. So I'm really and that, and when I chant, then I'm really uh, I, yeah. I can really. It's really good. I can focus on the chant, and then everything goes, and then I come relax, become relaxer, and then I feel oh, it's it's good. And, oh, the people are very nice, and it's, yeah, it's working out fine. So it's, that's like the first days, it's like this, and then yeah, later it becomes more more normal. The beginning is always exciting when I stay, but when I stay. Later, when I say, I know, okay, the chanting, and then you repeat the chanting, and you have a good feeling the first days you chanted. Uh, um, yeah, you, yeah, you have a good feeling. You feel like, yeah, this is good. That sounds good. And uh, I think I do, I do it good here. So, and then you just repeat it and repeat it. And what, what, I, what I noticed myself was that I uh, was wandering around with my thoughts. So I was there, I felt very comfortable, I was chanting, and then at the same time I was thinking about tomorrow, or about uh, yeah, what can I do on my day, day off, me tomorrow on my day off, maybe oh, I can do this. This was all happening while I was chanting. So, uh, and then, but it didn't feel right, right really. It felt a bit strange that I stay here for the people, 
because they give uh, the money to a monk and, and you are not really present there. You are with your thoughts somewhere else. So this, so then I, uh, I read uh, the saying of Kodo Sawaki that uh, you should do uh, things uh, in a way that can't be repeated uh, a second time. So and then, then I thought, yeah, I shouldn't stay here just just chanting it down and maybe think about something else, but really put my effort in the chant and. Uh, and I felt like it's much more powerful also and yeah, it's more yeah, authentic and also the connection to the people is, is better. So yeah, I think in a way this um, it was a good, uh, good reminder of uh, even, if, even if it's um, a routine, if we have to be careful not to, it's really easy to, to, uh, to wander away and, and lose your concentration. Uh, when you do something and you feel very comfortable doing it. So, yeah. So another thing saying from Kuro Zawaki I choose is um, the sixth one, sixth on page 24. The white geese leave no traces. Yet no matter where they fly, they never lose their way. There are, foot, there are no footprints on the way of a bird. It's not the same as a steam engine that runs on tracks or an ox well-worn path. The wild geese leaves no trace. This leaves no trace is, uh, I heard, so at first I think this is uh, from Dogen. Uh, what he is uh, quoted here, I'm not sure really where it is exactly, probably maybe in the Shobogenzo, I think. I just found that it's, uh, it's from Dogen, a quote. And I often read that, uh, I, I often uh, wrote, wrote uh, read, read, I often read this uh, Leave No Traces in other books and so on, uh, explained it, but I never really understand. Or I never really looked uh, more deeply behind it. Um, so what I found easier to, to understand was uh, they never lose their way. White geese leaves no traces, yes, no matter where they fly, they never lose their way. I was thinking, okay, wild geese, um, they are flying, but they are kind of their way, so they have, they will know where they want to go. They want to usually from the north to the south, in winter and uh, probably in, in, in summer to the north so they have a direction and uh, but they don't have like a train they have not a rail not really like a fixed path where they know okay i have to just stay here and then i will reach my goal reach my destiny uh, and also the ox uh, who's walking on the path he has his path you just can follow the path you don't have to think about or something. But the geese or the wild birds, how do they find their their way? So usually birds, uh, so probably the birds, they have some, some inner, they, they, they feel something. Uh, they have an inner knowledge. They feel something, so they follow their feeling. And maybe they follow, you can say, maybe their intuition. Uh, and I heard that birds that uh, fly uh, from north to south or south to north, they orientated themselves probably uh, on magnetic earth field or something maybe. So, but basically they have to look inside and yeah, and get in contact with their intuition and then that makes them staying or that makes them becoming uh, uh, on the coming yeah, reaching their goal and staying on the way. And uh, I read this uh, this quote from Dogen that we that we should uh, be like these wild geese, which leaves no trace and never lose their way, way. So we should be like the wild geese that looks inside uh, himself and finding out what's the right way. Where should I go? So it's a way of, a, of a intuition. 
So also what I read was uh, sometimes uh, that, that Zen is a training of intuition. It's an intuition. Training of the intuition. So intuition, so is so intuition is contrary to so the rational mind, what we usually follow, what we are learning in school, what we are training since childhood. So intuition is something we have to yeah, feel inside of us. And not following uh, not following a path. A path could be maybe that somebody says something to you and you just do what, what somebody says or it could be a writing and you just follow the, what they are writing there without thinking yourself, oh, is that right or what has it to do with myself. So, but at the same time, um, the, but it doesn't mean that maybe you shouldn't read anything because maybe reading can also uh, um, get in contact with the intuition and maybe something evolves out of that out of understanding so it's not really totally to abandon like writing so to read so we should be like wild geese so wild geese um, first it's wild compared to a train or an ox a wild geese, it's more maybe more uh, like a, like a natural, very natural animal, very natural and compared to a train, what human fabrics uh, fabricated, or an ox, what also maybe human use for cultivating the land or something. Mm, so a wild geese, so we should be like a wild geese. A wild geese, very natural, so like a very natural, like a. Yeah, the Buddha, the Buddha way of life um, will make us uh, like, yeah, living a life in a very natural, in, in a very natural state. So I think that's what also the wild geese uh, is standing for. So, and what does it no traces mean? A wild geese leaves no traces. Yet they are. No traces. Mm, when you leave no traces, you cannot look behind yourself and see, ah, look, that's, that was me. That was me. Uh, that's my steps. That's my steps. That's me. When you don't leave traces, you cannot do that. You look behind, you don't see like the geese, you don't see the air, like in the back and in the front, it's the air, there's nothing. And uh, what, what it could mean is, um, that usually we can we, uh, we, we ourselves we look behind ourselves in our mind and then we have our experience we have our emotions and uh, our thoughts and we compare it and we have it still here and we compare it to what is here and 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 we think about oh, yesterday I was like this today I was like this and and you are kind of comparing and you identifying with your old uh, old emotions and old thoughts and you and by this you have this kind of trace behind you and by this you create this kind of uh, yeah this me that's me i was yesterday i was like that last year i was this this is my picture so that's our usual usual way of of, of uh, yeah viewing ourselves and uh, yeah dogen says uh, we should be like wild geese uh, leaving no traces so actually, yeah, letting go of these past emotions and, and thoughts about ourselves. Because actually what we have is only this moment right now here. Yeah, so I think that's a, that's a finger point to yeah, what our life is, what our life really is. And not what we think it is. Yeah. What we usually live in. So 
so also be, like you heard it more probably also often like you should have a beginner's mind is also something like a beginner don't know something you just start small or empty your cup leave all your old knowledge or your your idea of what how should it be leave it out and just start a new like every moment so kind of this uh, i understand uh, it's like that yeah, but usually we don't do usually we have uh, yeah we have our our sense of ours it's very strong Usually we follow uh, an idea in our life. Uh, yeah. We have expectation where life should lead us. And uh, a similar sayings to this, uh, Kolo Sarvaki says uh, also in this uh, chapter that uh, life doesn't run on tracks. So it's kind of the same. You follow your intuition. You don't the track. You don't you don't have really a track, or you shouldn't. Stay on the track. Um, when you try to live your life according to a manual, you are sure to fail. Those who do things according to the book are failures. The sad thing about people is that they can't stray even a single step away from their habits. Yeah, so the habits uh, yeah, would be something like, in this case, like the habit of yeah, you have your old your old thoughts and your emotion and you and you create your this is me and I have to go I have to do this and this is my plan this is my expectation of life and this is how, sh how it should be okay next saying page 24 of 5 it's the 17th saying isn't it evident that the greatest happiness consists in doing what you have to do? The greatest happiness consists in, consists in doing what you have to do. Um, yeah, usually you would think maybe oh, what I have to do, and it's very hard. Or it's really, I would like to do what I want. Yeah, but he is here. Um, suggesting to do what you have to do makes you much more happier. Why? Maybe because then you can let go of your own personal preferences. What you want to do, you just have to do it. You have to let go of what you what you want and what your idea is of what you need to do or what you. So you have to let go of your own personal preferences. You have to let go and just forget about your happiness. Usually we are the other way around. We're looking for oh, what, what makes me happy, and then we try to, out, and then we try out a lot of different things, and then we do it, and then yeah, that's probably not that wasn't it. So we look around somewhere else. But maybe the best thing should be just do what, doing what you have to do and forget about your happiness. Um, yeah, here in Antalji also um, we have tasks to do. Um, and our own personal preference are not always in line with the schedule. And uh, yeah, but we have to do it. So. And it should lead us to a way of happiness. In these tasks, we can let go of our personal preferences. And in Antaji, it's maybe easier to, to do it, to do what you have to do and then let go. And uh, in this way, find the happiness. If 
I let it go of wanting to be happy. In anti G, it's maybe easier because the tasks we are doing here they are important to to practice here. Practice means to do zazen, to do the five day sessions uh, in the morning zazen and so forth. So it's easy because it's more easy mm, because it's a re so we see a reason in that we have to do. We know okay we are here because we practice so we have to do the task. Even if I don't feel like it, uh, you can recognize it and still doing it and let go of these like uh, resistance in yourself. So that makes it a bit easier here um, <clears throat> to to let go when you have to do something. And the second, why it's also a bit easier than in the normal society here in Antaji, uh, is that. Usually here you cannot uh, just hide yourself. Uh, you cannot go to the doctor and say, "Oh, I'm ill. Please, could you write me something uh, so I don't have to do this?" Or, uh, would be good. Or, or even you cannot go to your friends and, and or other people, and then you can complain about the situation and. Uh, uh, maybe build, building up something like you are here with your friends and there is something that it's that you don't want and uh, yeah you have to but you have to do it and there is and you build up even more uh, resistance to that so that's that's not so possible here so and, uh, yeah so I think anti-G in a way is it's 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 not easy but it's easier to do this what what Otto Sawaki Roshi did. Uh, he recommends to, or he says that uh, isn't it that happiness comes from uh, something that you have to do? So, yeah, this was basically in this chapter the three. Um, the three sayings I choose from Sawaki, I felt the most uh, sayings I could do something with. Mm. And then some words to the title. The title is saying to you who um, To you who would like to slap your boss with a letter of resignation. What has this all these things to do with this kind of title? <coughs> so I thought, so when you, for example, we are here in Antaiji and your boss would be Dojo-san and, uh, and you are at, at the point where you think like, oh, I cannot, I cannot do it anymore. So maybe because you're, yeah, you have an idea uh, where you want to go. You and, and, and it's not fitting here really. So you're you're on the track of your life, but then you feel like oh, this track doesn't fit with this place anymore. Mm, and then maybe you think, oh no, I have, maybe I have to leave. Mm. Or you read uh, again like Sawaki's sayings and think about it. Oh, should I leave or not? Maybe it's better. To, maybe I'm not so sure. So Dojo-san could be your boss and you could have a, this letter of resignation you would like to just slap there. Yeah. And do you have really, what, what is your reason when you would like to do it? Is your reason really uh, that uh, important or is it, yeah, so just, yeah, that could be, mm, yeah, the type of, could use it in uh, you could use it in this way. But so what you we are here having having to do tasks that which we have to do and, and in these tasks you can you can try to let go of yourself and, and find in this way kind of happiness. And uh, yeah so you could you could think oh, maybe it's a good thing to do not to resign. Okay, so now I would like to continue with the 
with this next chip which will be on 